A huge thanks to Varos, who I actually reached out to to sponsor this video because I think it's the perfect thing for what we're gonna be going over today. I've recently landed on a reporting format that I've gotten tons of positive feedback from my team as well as the consultancy clients that I work with outside of Thesis. It's truly nothing fancy, but if you're worried that your reporting isn't up to a client's standards, or you're looking for a place to start, or you're just curious about the reporting that I use for my consultancy clients, and some clients at thesis, then you're in the right place. Now, before we dive into this actual report right here, I wanna talk about why reporting is so important. If you don't really care about this spiel or you already know why reporting is important, go ahead and skip to this part of the video where I dive in and show you this report right here. But I do think it's important, so hear me out. If you work with clients, having the right reporting template can go a long way in communicating the story behind the data. Not having a solid reporting format was actually one of the biggest complaints that clients I've had throughout my career were telling me and telling my agencies because they weren't actually able to retain the data that we were explaining to them throughout our weekly or bi-weekly meetings. Wow. <laughs> by fixing this reporting format and committing to it, we've actually been able to retain clients longer. Additionally, I've also found that having the right type of reporting format forces the people who are working on the strategy or on the execution of the account to actually step back and analyze that data. Sure, you can optimize an ad account to oblivion and you can spend tons of hours doing creative work, but no matter what, your clients are still gonna have two questions. Number one, what did we learn? And number two, what's next? And this reporting structure is gonna show you exactly how to do that. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I actually found the design of this template on Canva and I was able to export it, upload it to Google Slides because I found that Google Slides was the easiest way to share reporting with your clients. So here's the title page. I really just like to have the client name here, the date. Now I also tend to put the other logos for other platforms. So if this was going to go over TikTok, I'd have TikTok as well, maybe a Google one, just so that they know what type of platforms we're going to be looking over today and analyzing. Next up is the agenda. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. And what I actually like to do is I like to copy and paste this right into a Slack message to the client a day or so before we meet with them so that they can know exactly what we're gonna be going over. And it'll also link out into this deck as well. Now, even though I'm primarily looking at creative metrics, I also think it's really important to zoom in on the performance numbers and really give an overall baseline for what happened in the account that month. So what I'm gonna be doing here is looking at the most recent last 30 days data and the previous 30 days so that we can draw a comparison and notice trends that are happening throughout the account over the last 60 days. So for this account, we can see, oh, we actually reduced spend and that's probably because CPA was creating that app. Why, why was CPA creating that app? I also wanted to point out that, hey, there was a 15% decrease in overall purchases. Hook rate seemed to be pretty standard across the board. We were primarily using videos in this type of account as well as hold. But I noticed that, hey, frequency was also going up a little bit. So it seemed like a bulk of our creative was being delivered to the same people over and over again. And the click-through rate decreased. Now I always hear from people, oh, click-through rate is really important to talk about when um, analyzing your creatives. And I I really don't think it's that important of a metric. In fact, I never create a creative thinking, oh, I need to get more people to click on this to increase click-through rate. Cause that's just a really hard thing to do on Facebook. It's a lot easier to say, hey, I'm gonna do these tactics to increase hook rate, to increase hold rate. Now, the reason why I have it click-through rate here is because I noticed that overall the trending was down and pretty significantly. And when I dug into certain creatives that were launched in the ad account, I realized it was actually in the historical top performer that we were seeing an overall 20% decrease, which is a big sign of ad fatigue. So that was something that I wanted to talk about with the clients and really highlight here right up front. Now, the next thing that I like to look at is after looking at our own metrics, I like to compare those metrics to other competitors in their industry. And the platform that I use to do this is Veros, who is also the sponsor of this video today. Veros is a benchmarking software that allows you to anonymously compare your metrics to other companies in your industry, AKA your competitors. So if you've ever wondered what the average Facebook ad spend or TikTok ad spend was for your industry, Veros can tell you that data. Varos 
can also tell you CPMs, cost per purchase, ROAS, click-through rates, and tons of other metrics that are gonna be able to allow you to benchmark yourself to your competitors. So here you can see that we were looking at the Varos data and we noticed that there was a pretty big median CPM spike. What this means is that when looking at overall CPM metrics for their industry, we noticed that that went up pretty significantly. Now, the reason why I wanted to highlight this data specifically for my clients is because it was actually during this time that we noticed that their CPAs were spiking and that users just weren't converting as they normally were. What we later found out was that this was a bug in Facebook, but by being able to do a retro on what was also happening to other competitors at that time, we were able to see that the median CPN rose and then we also were able to see that there was a sharp decrease in spend overall over the entire industry as a result of that CPM spike. So I like to use Varos data when looking at very specific use cases, kind of like this one, when we noticed that something weird was going on in the account and in the industry and on the platform. But I also like to highlight just the overall metrics in general. So we're able to look at, hey, what does spend look like across your industry right now? What does conversion rates look like? What do purchases or cost per purchases look like? What do click-through rates and CPMs look like? Just so that they have an idea of how their metrics are fitting into the overall ecosystem or how they're comparing against their competitors. Another important use case I have for Varos is when we're onboarding a client onto a new platform like TikTok ads. So now I'm able to tell my clients that want to get on TikTok ads, hey, this is what the average amount of spend looks like in your industry. This is what CPAs look like. This is what click-through rates look like. This is what CPMs look like. And that hard data has been wildly valuable. Again, huge thanks to Varos for sponsoring this video. Be sure to sign up for a free Varos account at varos.com. Getting back into the rest of the report, right here I like to highlight highest performers in the month or year. Now, I think what's kind of interesting is I really do like to highlight, you know, number one, have a preview link so that anyone looking at this report can go and see the actual asset, the amount spent, the purchases, CPA, click-through rate, hook, hold. Now, of course, I know a lot of you are in e-commerce or in drop shipping definitely put ROAS in there. For a majority of my clients, I work with a lot of subscription brace brands. That's just why I don't have that in there, but this is really um, customizable for your own unique use case. Now, something interesting that I do like to do here is number one, we're gonna be looking at trends. So, hmm, what do all these top performers have in common? Do they have the same type of copy? Do they have the same type of messaging points? What type of format are they in? Another thing that I like to do is I actually like to have the slide from the previous few months so that we can see over time, hey, this is the type of creative that's lasting a lot longer and these ones circled here are the ones fatiguing out. So for instance, this could have been the highest top performers for October, but then for November, it was actually these. And by the way, I am not working or affiliated with Magic Spoon in any sense. I just wanted to use them for this report because I couldn't actually show you my clients that I'm currently working with because NDAs. So after looking at highest performers, sometimes we're also going to be doing this slide for lowest performers, for instance. Um, but that's something that's just really more customizable for what you or your clients want to go over. Now, the thing that tends to take up the most amount of time here is going through the individual creative test. So you can see here, this is creative test 75. And I also like to link out directly to the ads manager data, because sometimes we want to screen share with our clients and show them exactly what we're seeing inside the platform. But the place where I start here is looking at the test criteria. So number one, what was our hypothesis? What was our reason for conducting this test? This test, based on what Magic Spoon was posting, and I assume they were doing in this test, was they wanted to see if reference in TikTok and or Twitch would drive an increase of sales. They had two variations, and the variable that they were testing in these variations was the hook. So one is gonna be for TikTok, the other's gonna be for Switch, and there is a bit of an imagery difference there. Now, what we often look at here are the same metrics we looked at in the highest and lowest performers. And then we do a really quick analysis. We say, okay, the TikTok hook outpoured the Twitch, all the metrics, on the TikTok variation point to a winning ad. And then I also detail the ad ops. So here we decided to increase spend by 3X and then also graduated to the scaling campaign. So it's definitely a winner, which is awesome. And then the next steps we wanna take from what we learned here are, you know, what type of iterations do we wanna make here? And also, are there any other notes on creative briefs that we wanna add to? Do we want to make this, I saw this on TikTok kind of hook more of a standard part of our briefing process that we want more creators to act on? That's what we would do. And we 
we detail all that here. Now, I want you to remember this analysis point because this is not where this is going to stay. We're also gonna be adding it somewhere else, which you'll see in a second. Now, again, as many creative tests as we launched that month, because I like to do these reports monthly, that's how many creative tests there's going to be, um, which is probably you know the bulk of where you'll spend your time. The next thing I like to look over for these is I actually like to look at competitor creatives. So we would be looking at the individual competitors for this client and really saying, hmm, this is the type of messaging they're using. This is the type of format they're using. This is the type of hooks they're using. Really standard creative strategy stuff. And another thing I like to do too for my clients is again, I'm gonna be duping duplicating this month to month so that we can actually look at trends for like the last three months. But if you're just starting, go ahead and start here. I find that clients love this slide because they just love to see what other competitors are doing. Some other slides that I've made to complement this are also things like platform trends. So if you have a client that's on TikTok and you're starting to see more specific TikTok style trends for that industry, we'll also add a slide for that as well. Now, the next part that I actually put some of the homework on the client for is this brainstorming section. So you can see here in the middle, we have an internal team. This is also like the client team. And I tell them when I send this over the day before we have the actual meeting, hey, if you have some brainstorm ideas, be sure to put it on slide 10. And what I'll do too is I'll have my team or myself also put, jot down some quick ideas, some quick discussion starters. Um, also link out to maybe a four play board or um, link out to some ads library stuff so that we can have some visuals to guide the conversation. And what we'll tend to do is we'll also make notes on, hey, these are the type of things we actually want to execute on, which then we will start to detail into our creative roadmap. Now, this is just a template that I have, but this is the pretty much the same creative roadmap that we use for all of our clients. Now, the thing I want to point out right here is the takeaways section. So do you remember this creative test analysis? What we'll actually do is we'll actually copy and paste it right there so that we can keep a log of all of the learnings from each of our creative tests. And to keep it simple, we then have next steps. The first one is almost always for myself or the growth team member to update the creative roadmap. So again, we're gonna be taking a look at the analysis portion here, putting those into the takeaways. We're also gonna be taking a look at the notes or things that we wanna execute on for the next few tickets and then adding those down here or up here, depending on how you want to format this. Um, and then I'll also have some to do's for the brand. And again, after this call concludes, I will just simply copy this and then paste it into the Slack channel so that everyone is really up to date on what they're doing. Now, I know you're probably looking at this and you're thinking, wow, this is super creative heavy or what about the growth metrics? Again, I wanted to keep this pretty bare bones so that you could customize it to the things that are going to be most useful for your teams and for your clients. But some other slides that I like to include in here, especially on the growth side, are going to be things like a CRO or landing page analysis or updates on landing page tests. I also like to do a breakdown analysis on age, on gender, as well as on placement so that we can see, okay, these are where Facebook or TikTok are pooling the spend. And it's kind of cool to track that month over month as well. Another thing that I like to do is just screenshot some of the motion reports that we are using for our creative analytics. And some of my favorite reports to dive into every single month include a creator analysis for UGC so that we can take a look at what type of creators are actually generating high conversion rates and high purchases for us so that we can go out and source more of those people. I also like doing a format analysis. So, okay, is UGC working? Is us versus them working? Are images working? Are whatever, all the different types of formats there are, we do a format analysis on that. We also do a messaging analysis for a lot of our clients um, based on the type of value props they want to focus in on so we can see what's actually resonating and driving high conversion rates. I also like to do a hook analysis as well as a hold analysis so that we can take a look at, hey, what types of creatives are doing the best job of hooking our users and what type of editing styles and subsequent messaging and imagery is doing the best job at retaining them and increasing our viewer rates. Now let's go over some common questions that I get when it comes to reporting. The first one is, do I need to have a slide deck for each meeting? I feel like I actually get this question internally. And the reality is, is maybe it depends. I only like to really meet in person or not in person, but like on Google meets with my clients once a month 
bi-weekly if, uh, if it's a necessity. And if you are doing those bi-weekly or monthly type of meetings, then yeah, I do find that slide decks tend to help move the conversation along and keep things really on schedule and make it a lot more clear for what you're discussing. I've also seen a lot of agencies just use like a Word doc. And to be honest, I just find that people don't really pay attention and there's a lack of clarity or they're jumping into spreadsheets a lot and, and they're just missing a lot of that context and that visualization. So I have found that especially for creative reporting, I really do like doing that in slide deck format. It does take time though. Which brings me to the next question, which is how much time should I spend on reporting? Um, I, there's definitely an ethos I'd say um, for some agencies that are like, oh, we don't spend as much time on reporting in fancy dashboards because we actually wanna do the work. And I definitely understand that. But like I had mentioned earlier, I think that being able to sit down and analyze what's going on, um, not only with your client, but also with your competitors, not only metrics wise, thanks again, Mauro, but also um, visually and creative wise is a really important step in the process to know what to do next. So for this reporting, template I'd say I spend anywhere from like two to three hours to like make one of these from scratch um, I could probably get it down to an hour and a half I'm just quite slow candidly so I'd say if you can get your reporting down to one and a half to two three hours you're probably in a good space overall if that's over an entire month <laughs> The final thing I wanna talk about is automated reporting. So in addition to doing this type of reporting template, we do generate a series of automated reports for our clients. Number one, if you are a fan of this channel, you already know that I use Motion for my creative analytics reporting. Our clients tend to have access to that. So that's really how we are, provide um, creative analytics to them on the go. We also use Funnel.io to generate daily, weekly, and monthly sheet style reporting, which is just like a wall of numbers and text. There are some clients that feel really comfortable with using Google Sheets and using that type of automated reporting. So we do supplement with that. And that's also where our creative reporting template lives. But to be honest, I find that like some clients never even look at it and it doesn't really suffice for their needs when it comes to reporting, especially as you work with bigger and bigger clients. So that's why I really like having this additional reporting template, slide deck kind of formula, um, because again, I also think it's a lot more strategic in a way, instead of like, numbers optimization base. And that's it. Again, a huge thanks to Varos for sponsoring this video. Be sure to sign up for your free account there. It's really gonna blow your mind. This video didn't even scratch the surface. You're gonna be able to compare Facebook, TikTok data, as well as Google Analytics data, Shopify data, and a whole lot more. So be sure to check them out and be sure to tell them that I sent you.